Hello everyone, my name is James from Make Film Tell Stories. In this video, I'm going to show you my setup for the Canon C100 for filmmaking. The majority of my work is as a corporate video producer, and as such I needed a camera that was really ergonomical and gave me a really great image straight out of the camera. But I really needed something that was an all-in-one package. Sound, colour, ergonomics, the lot. And that's the reason why for me the Canon C100 is actually my camera of choice. So I'm just going to take you through what my Canon C100 is made up of and all the bits that comprise it and all the little accessories that I use just to make it that little bit better. So first off, Canon C100, um, it's the DAF model. So it's got that dual pixel autofocus which I find unbelievably helpful on every single production that I do. I actually use the autofocus a lot more than probably a camera operator should admit to using, but I like it. It works really well for me. My lenses of choice are the Tamron 24-70 and the Canon 70-200, both f2.8, both have image stabilization. Um, I choose the Tamron over the Canon just because at the time the Canon 24-70 didn't have the image stabilization and the Canon 24-105 a little bit soft. The 24-70 is pretty much my go-to lens. It's on the camera 90% of the time when I'm doing uh, corporate productions. If I'm doing narrative productions, normally I'm over on the 70 to 200 because I do like those close-ups just a little bit more. Now, one of the things that sets the C100 apart from the C300 is the lack of a broadcast codec. Um, it records in 8-bit 420. So to get around this and to give me much more color space information and to, when I need to, provide uh, footage to other video production companies, news outlets, that sort of thing, um, I use the Atomos Ninja Blade. Um, the Ninja Blade is a five inch screen, 720 monitor, and it can take a clean HDMI from the camera into the recorder. The C100 only outputs 8-bit 422, but if I was to plug the Ninja Blade into my 7D Mark II, I would get a 10-bit 422 signal straight out of the HDMI. Bizarre, but that's how it is. Um, that's held on here by an Aperture Magic Arm. I searched for a very long time to get a Magic Arm that was, to use once of a better word, strong and stable, um, and that didn't swing loose when I wasn't expecting it to. Um, this Aperture one is rock solid, absolutely rock solid. So on the back of the LCD here, I have a Sackler S108, which is an LCD cover specifically for the C100. Um, I use this rather than the Z Finder or any kind of eyepiece because I don't like using EVFs, I never have, which is great because the C100 has a terrible EVF. Moving on to one of the aspects of why I got Canon C100 over other cameras, especially from the DSLR mirrorless world, is the XLR inputs. They're fantastic. Actually, being able to just plug a microphone in and have it all recorded natively to the camera is fantastic. It's something I was really unaware of how much I was going to love and going to need. I only use microphones from one manufacturer, Rode. They are the best bang for buck microphone you can get on the market, end of, nothing else. Normally as my onboard mic, I use the NTG1 um, which, is, which can be found in powered, And then I've normally got a Lavalier microphone going into the camera in the form of my Rode filmmaking kits. These are fantastic wireless Lavalier kits. Um, so much easier to use than the Sennheiser G3s of before. I know Sony have got their own ones now, but for me, these are really, really fantastic. And one of the other aspects about them is that they've got this plus 10 and plus 20 dB function. I use this setup on every single production, whether it's a corporate video, whether it's a narrative film, behind the scenes, this is my setup of choice. It is perfect for everything I do. It is compact enough that I can get on a train and go to wherever with it. And it's also big enough that when I go and do corporate productions, people go, oh, okay, you do corporate video rather than pulling out a tiny little mirrorless camera or a tiny little DSLR and they go, oh, can you really do everything on all that? Because there is a terrible stigmatism against that at the moment. Still is, still will be. Um, and this at the moment just gives corporate clients that little bit of extra security going, oh, okay, it's fine. I don't happen to believe that having a bigger camera ma makes you a better camera operator. I don't believe that whatsoever. But from my perspective, the Canon C100 is my camera of choice every single day of the week. 
And that's my setup for the Canon C100 across corporate video production and narrative filmmaking. I'd really like to see what some of you have been doing, so post away in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and I'll bring you more great videos when I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.